Welcome back, my friends. <clears throat> First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all of your messages. I know I've said that before, but it remains true. And I took a few days to, to read carefully the amazing volume of correspondence I've received. And it's hard to comment on it. And actually, this whole YouTube channel thing is a learning experience for me, and, it, and it's a wonderful experience. I've never been in touch with so many people around the world with a common interest. And so what I did is I thought, well, I should probably maybe take a couple of days, in fairness to all of you, and reflect on which direction to go with the channel. Of course, I make lots of mistakes with lots of things, but um, there seemed to be a focus on 22s, uh, partly because of laws and jurisdictions, which, which uh, the, the logic of all those laws evades me. But nevertheless, one has to uh, respect all these things. So I have um, I have about 25 videos planned um, and I have the guns. I had I had to go out of my way to find some of them that you recommended. Oh also all the recommendations for books in particular um, viewers from India and the great United Kingdom looking forward to the royal wedding on the weekend. Um, uh, there were suggestions for books that I actually had never heard of, but I, um, I'm looking for those books and I'll get back to you individually when I find them. And of course, I read them. I read all the time as I can, but we'll quickly shift to the video. So we're going to look at 22s and one of the most requested videos was for the Browning semi-automatic 22, John Browning. Uh, I'm not misleading you when I tell you I've probably had 20 of these, but when the requests all came in, I had none. <laughs> so I put out the word I'm looking for a, for a, a Browning 22, and uh, this one arrived. And um, I can tell you that <clears throat> it, while it's new in, new in the box, I don't think anybody used this gun. And this th this is the Browning 22. So this I look I looked this up. And I'm sure that all of you have a lot more time for proper research. 1914 was when it was introduced. It's another John Browning gem. I mean, just look how slender and perfect the whole thing is. Uh, you know how popular the Ruger 1022s are, the takedowns? Um, well, I have to say, this is, this, this is as smooth as it gets. It's an interrupted thread. I don't know if we can focus on that. But... Those of you who collect Winchesters know interrupted threads. I can talk about this for a second. So you can see the threading is what locks the mechanism together. This is an adjustment collar, which I'm going to talk about in a second, because this gun is interesting. And well, I mean, it's interesting overall, but it's interesting for a particular reason. And that is that for some reason at the factory, they, um, they, they didn't adjust the threading correctly. And as a consequence, although the gun assembles okay, it's not locked up tight. And, oh, sorry, I put it in the wrong way. I actually practiced this before filming. But what's throwing me off is that, take a look at the bottom of the action. See this little piece here? That's the takedown lever or button and it's not in the correct recess. So of all these ones that I've had, this is the only one that actually doesn't go together properly. So what I have to do is I have to back off on this collar so that the threads can turn in more. But it's still worth making the video even with this fumbling because the gun, um, it does work. Uh, it, it, it works fine, which is interesting that a gun that's assembled <laughs> incorrectly still works. But um, yeah, it extracts and it jacks you. One thing that would all line up, but it does. So yeah, we have a fantastic takedown system, although it has to be adjusted properly, but I think it's meaningful that I can take this gun and adjust it in a few minutes and it'll work fine. And that's another thing I should mention in case you haven't seen my other videos. I've purchased quite a few guns that are virtually new. This was made in 1968 and we're nowhere near 1968. So either somebody bought it and put it away because they don't like shooting anymore, or they bought it 
never looked at it, then looked at it, then it didn't work. They put it away again. And, and here it is so many years later because it didn't work. And it's too late to go back for warranty or they thought maybe they're assembling it wrong, kind of like I did a moment ago. But it doesn't matter. The reason I'm mentioning this is if you find a virtually flat new firearm, quite often there's some small problem with it that resulted in the original owner putting it away. And this is easy to resolve. Um, but let's, let's forget all that and I'll go back to the gun itself. So people were commenting on how handy they are. I mean, have a look at this. Look, look at how slender the action is. It ejects from the bottom. And again, forget about this, this alignment thing. It's not a big deal. Uh, ejects from the bottom. So there's no ejection port on the right. And if you load it from the back, very simple. Turn this tube and and drop your rounds in. So a lot of you will be familiar with this gun, but a lot of you won't, especially the young shooters. Oh, that's something else I wanted to say. I think that if the firearms industry wants to move ahead, sorry, I have to figure out what's going on here. There we are. And survive, uh, we have to reach out to young uh, shooters and people interested in, young people interested in guns and based on what I'm reading on my channel, it's just a matter of communication. I think firearms are fundamentally interesting. And um, all of us need to, like I said, reach out and take young people to the range, take them shooting, introduce them to the whole concept. There's more to life than sitting in front of a computer game. Not that there's anything wrong with computer games. I like them too. Anyhow, uh, Browning semi-auto bottom eject. Let's see if I can so you pull this back This because this this extractor kind of interrelates with parts in here and then um, We can turn it and did you did you see the force that was needed for me to turn that that's normally not there these normally Turn easily so I have to make an adjustment in here, but can you imagine that John Browning knew that there might be adjustment necessary. So you just take off the fore end and we can adjust for that. So very simple. And um, I mean, easily one of my favorite 22 is just a beautiful, frankly, it's a work of art. And I've seen them engraved, you know, with squirrels and acorns and all kinds of things. This one's made in Japan, like I said, 1968. Prior to the 60s was made in Belgium. I wanted to talk about that for a moment. People collect these Belgium-made Brownings, and I did too for quite a while. Actually, did really well with that. And um, and then I critically and hopefully intelligently looked at the Browning, Belgium Browning rifles, shotguns, and the Japanese ones. And I'll go out on a limb here. I can't see any difference quality-wise between the Japanese guns and the ones made in Belgium. Some people say the ones made in Japan are better. I don't want to say that because I don't know that that's true. But the Japanese guns are superb. The, 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 the factory just happens to be in Japan. So anyway, to the collectors, of which I'm one, if you like it saying made in Belgium, that's fine. Uh, this says made in Japan and I can't notice a difference. This one, it, it doesn't even line up. By the way, uh, I said that might be, I think I just said it might be assembled wrong at the factory, but it could have been that somebody just fiddled around with this collar or something else. So you just don't know. And you try to always do things like scientifically, not concluding stuff and then, you know, believing stuff and concluding it's true. It could be false, could be something else. Anyway, wonderful 22 um, but stock uh, fed and I hope I didn't mislead you. You can feed it through here. Um, you can also feed it through the back if I'm not wrong. I always fed it through here. Anyhow, I always like it, by the way, when you when you send me um, remarks and corrections. That That's a good thing. You have no idea. The presence of mind that you have to have in order to make these videos in one shot. I don't edit. Um, I don't. It's, it's a stream of consciousness. And as if I was talking to you in my home, which is the way I like operating. 
Anyway, beautiful little rifle, and if, if you were, I think they're going to discontinue these I, one of these days. I, they've only made like a half, half a million since 1914, which sounds like a lot, but it's not that many. Anyhow, I guess they'll be around for a while, folding rear sight, and they handle just they, like they weigh nothing. If you want to buy a gun for your wife or for your girlfriend or for a young person, it's just about perfect. And I like that tube feeding. We don't always have to have clip magazines and volume of fire. These are wonderful. And how often can you buy something anyway that started out in 1914 and it's still being made today? And you can tell by how I handle it. It's just a feather. They set it up for a scope, but why bother? Anyhow, so there's that one, and then I'm going to move to another one because I told you I have 25 videos to make. This is made in Russia. You know I love Russian guns because, as I told you, I think the Russian guns are like Russian people, kind of indestructible. Um, this is a beautifully made rifle, but it's made beautifully in a different way. It's a clip-fed re repeater, and the reason I put it here is I think my channel is one of few channels where you can see guns together just because I have so many guns or I can get them so this is the the, the classic browning and here we have the the Russian tank and I, this thing came with like five magazines and uh, this thing never jams this thing is tough the parts are big bold it's not necessarily heavy um, the springs are robust everything is frankly the way it should be and the design of the stock is excellent and I put everything in this thing all kinds um, of ammo Remington Winchester Federal all kinds a mix and match drop them in here and it digests these like a, a 22 AK but I don't know where you get these they're there I'm not even sure how I have this <laughs> anyway um, of course it's threaded for a uh, silencer which I don't have either anyways um, before my um, cameraman <laughs> loses their arms and hands I'll I'll stop talking and thanks for watching and um, and please come back and and please have a look at patreon it's um it's it's another thing going on there that I'm doing which I think you'll like uh, and again thank you we'll see you next time